Good evening, everyone. Good to see you all this evening. Let's pray. Let's get going. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for opportunities to grow in the word. We thank you for your presence, your spirit, our lead and guide and help and counsel, paraclete, advocate. We thank you that the spirit of God will lead us into all truth and will never let us down when it comes to truth. So Holy Spirit, as you always do, see to it that the word goes forth with clarity, unhindered by the forces that have been destroyed as a result of Christ's finished and complete work at Calvary. And it's that finished work that we rest in. We have entered into the rest of our Father, and where that rest is is everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. Peace and love and joy and grace, shalom, wholeness, nothing missing or broken. We thank you for for the blessing that was, was on Adam, the blessing that was on Noah, that blessing is on us in its fullness through Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that stresses and worries and anxieties are not things we have to accept and remain in, but rather we can go to you in, in prayer and in communication and make our requests known to you, knowing that your peace that goes beyond our understanding guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In the midst of a trial or storm, we can find ourselves at peace. You are Jehovah Shalom, our peace, and Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. You have made sure that every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We can seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and know that everything we need will be added to us. If we delight ourselves in you, Father, you give us the desires of our heart. Thank you, Father, for desires in us that are in line with your word. And your Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. It is, a, it is a part of you, your nature and your character to heal. You healed us or made healing available spiritually by sending your son, Jesus. Salvation is the healing of our spirit. And we thank you that because of that, entering into that, we have access to a healed soul and a healed body. Anxiety and worry-free living and, and pain-free living. They may come, but we choose not to accept it, Father. Rather, we stand on the word which says, Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes we were healed. Father, you sent the very best of yourself, your word, and healed us. It was finished at the cross. So we thank you for it. We accept it. We receive it by faith. We rest in it. We expect it. We won't just be hearers of the word, but doers as well. And we are not of those who draw back. We are not of those who give up. We are not of those who quit. Father, I thank you. This evening, our hearts are prepared. The seed of the word will be sown incorruptible, and it'll produce in our lives. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Amen. So we were talking about the Christmas tree last time we were together. And just head over to Jeremiah 10 again. I won't read every single one of these scriptures, but I will focus on just a few things that that uh, would clearly let us know that this isn't talking about the supposed idolatrous Christmas tree that should not be in our homes in the month of December, along with the other pagan decorations. Here in Jeremiah chapter 10, mind you, again, Christmas didn't even exist. Okay, verse 1, hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Here's the word of the Lord to Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. All right, thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. You know what's interesting about this is that there were ways of the Gentiles that were actually similar to the ways of the Jews. There were some, I mean, the, Israel was not the only nation that practiced circumcision, for example. Uh, there were other nations that had similar burial rites, for example. 
So this is, this is what Jeremiah is saying here. This is, this is something intentional. Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. It's like don't go after the way of the Gentiles. Uh, do not be dismayed at the, at the signs of heaven. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. Right? Afraid. Right? A, a kind of fear and awe because, well, the Gentiles worship many of the signs of heaven. All right, verse 3, for the customs of the people are futile, they're empty, for one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold, they fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. There it is, right there. See, told you. Shouldn't have a Christmas tree. It's right there, Jeremiah said it. And for those of you who may be tuning in, we're on a subject called Happy Holy Days. And we've been on this, for, on this for quite some time. We started off with Valentine's and St. Patrick's, and it's taken a little time to get to Christmas. This is our final holiday that we're going to focus on, and we'll unpack it. And then we'll be done with this particular lesson. But I saved Christmas for the end because there's a lot of complexity to it, but a lot of re re revealing as well. This is not talking about Christmas, of course. Again, there was no Christmas. It did not exist. What is Jeremiah saying? What is the Lord saying through Jeremiah? He is saying, what does the Gentile do? What do, what do the Canaanites do? They go into the forest. They cut the tree down. They take the wood. And with the wood, what do they do? They fashion. They mold. They make an idol. They believe that there's life in the idol. They worship the idol. And not only do they fashion an idol, they decorate the idol with what? Silver. And, go, and not silver and gold tinsel. <laughs> not silver and gold colored paper. No, silver and gold. And gold. They, because they believe this is, this, this is whatever god or goddess in the earth. They are, remember I shared with you, I shared with you, uh, that scene from Troy where Achilles cuts the head off of the god Apollo. And Hector says, I saw him do it, and Apollo didn't strike him down. Meaning that the pagans expected there to be retribution for desecrating an idol. And of course in the film, well, well nothing happened, so Hector's like, oh, well, wait a minute, this is, this, this is causing me to question some things about what I've been believing about the gods. And so, the, and that's how the that's how the Gentiles looked at at, at these these molded images, these graven images. That that yes, the actual God is somewhere out there, maybe in close proximity or far away. But this is a representation of them. And if I pray to this idol, I'm praying to that God. And Jeremiah was saying, "Hey Israel, you don't go into the forest. First off, you you already know what the Decalogue says. You know what the ten say." Make no graven image for the purpose of worshiping of anything in heaven, on the earth, or, or under the earth. So that's what this is about. This has nothing to do with, with Christmas. Now, now, I did share with you that, that the Christmas tree, as we know it, and I'll give you some, some detail later on in the lesson, but the Christmas tree, as we know it, was inspired by an Anglo-Saxon pagan tree, which was inspired by a greater Scandinavian pagan tree, but that Scandinavian pagan tree was inspired by the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Look at that. And you are whatever the first patriarch is. Right? Any, any child of Abraham. I don't, I don't, care, I don't care if it's a, an Edomite, a, a Midianite, an Arabian, or an Israelite. They're all Hebrew because they're what their daddy is. Abraham's Hebrew a child of Eber, an Eberite, so, so he's going to produce what he is. Now, there'll be distinctions as we move further down the line. This specific group of Hebrews are Israelites. This specific group of, of Hebrews are Edomites, this Midianites, Arabs, etc. But they all can trace themselves back to who? Abraham. And the same with, with the tree. If the tree that we put in our... They, well, some of us buy the fake ones so we don't have to clean up. But even if the, the trees we, we, we buy 
from the same areas that two months earlier were pumpkin patches. We, we buy that tree, we, we take it, we put it in our house, and we deck for one to say, well, that's pagan, and here's the tree that inspired the pagan. Well, again, yeah, that tree was pagan that inspired the Christmas tree, but, and yeah, the tree that inspired the pagan tree that inspired the Christmas tree was pagan, but guess, guess what we know about the tree that inspired the pagan tree? The tree of life. Right there in the garden of where? The garden of Eden. Okay, now, Go with me back to Luke. You all recall Luke chapter 1. There were three things. I said, we're going we're gonna to come back to this. We're going to circle back to this. All right, we'll come back to the tree at some point in the lesson. But let's go back to, to Luke. Do you remember what those three things were, ladies and gentlemen? There were three things. I mean, we read the whole chapter of Luke. It's long. Uh, uh, the whole first chapter, that is. Very long. But there were three things, right? three things that, that stood out. Maybe some of you wrote them down. Maybe some of you remember them. Maybe you're trying to remember them, so I'm going to jog your memory a bit. First, we, we observed and we noted that Zacharias was, was a priest of a particular division, one by a particular name. And we read it right here where? We read it right here in verse 5, which reads what? There was, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of a particular division, the division of Abiah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Oh, what tribe is that? That's, that's Levi. And her name was Elizabeth, right? And then you drop down to verse nine, uh, 8 and 9. And it says what? So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division. Something tells me we're going to have to visit this division at some point in this lesson. And if, in fact, we are to visit this division, I wonder if there are other divisions. Serving as priest before God in the order of his division according to the custom of the priesthood his lot fell, hmm, his lot fell, all right, to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Doesn't it sound like, 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 when it, like it's when it's his turn to do? Right. Now, that was, that was the first thing that we wanted to note. Okay, what, what was the second thing? Does anyone recall? It was... Come on, Eunice, you take all the notes. <laughs> I believe it may have been somewhere in the 26th verse. Do you all recall me telling you to take note of something? Talk to me. Six month. Six month. Anyone remember what the third thing was? If you don't, it's okay, because we're, we're going to focus on this one right now. But if you do, just shout it out. If you wrote it down somewhere in your notes, there were three things. One, that Zacharias was a priest according to the order of, or the division of Abiah. That the month we are noting here is the sixth month. And then, it doesn't matter right now anyway, because we're about to focus on this sixth month. Okay, leading up to this point in the lesson, I shared with you three possible months of the birth of Jesus. One being the actual month we celebrate his birthday in December. All right, December is not just random. December is not, oh, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. You celebrate the birth of Jesus in the month of December, and, and you don't realize that's Nimrod's birthday. You don't know if that's Nimrod's birthday. <laughs> No evidence that supports that. And here's how we know there's no evidence that supports that it's Nimrod's birthday. Because Nimrod has been considered by historians as an enigma of a figure. He's a riddle. History knows him more by the name of Ninus as opposed to the name Nimrod. Both their names, as a matter of fact, 
Nimrod, uh, Nimrod, according to Genesis 10, built a city in Assyria, a capital city called Nineveh. Y'all remember Nineveh in the account of Jonah. That's where Jonah was headed to, to preach the word. Well, what does Nineveh translate into? Now, again, Genesis 10 says who built it. Nimrod built it. The biblical definition of Nineveh is the abode of Ninus. So that tells me Nimrod is Ninus. That Ninus is Nimrod. In other words, Ninus is another name for Nimrod. Nimrod is another name for Ninus. Well, Nimrod has a bunch of names. And there are a bunch of figures in history that it's believed may be Nimrod or may be figures that inspired Nimrod, which means what? Nimrod is a bit of an enigma. No one knows when he was born. I have his exact date. Nimrod was born on December 24th, December 26th, December 25th. When you celebrate the birth of Jesus, you're really celebrating the birth of Nimrod. Quiet. <laughs> Quiet with all of that. Were there some pagan festivities that took place in, in December by other cultures? Sure. Could some of those festivals have inspired what we know as Christmas? Possibly. Not fully, but possibly. Here we go. Six months. Guys, I'm about to go to the board and write. <laughs> Here we go. Now, the six, oh, yeah, you're right. Let me finish. All right, I didn't say those three months. Uh, so December being one, September being another. You, you don't even look like you write notes. You just, you, just, you, just, you just regurgitate everything. That's right. May. May, December, and September. And I said the order we would go in from, from least likely to most likely, May, December, September. I'm, gonna, I'm going to present an argument for them all. Now, watch this. There... And I'll, I'll have a little more detail on this next time we're together. But I discovered that there are today, ladies and gentlemen, there are a group of Egyptian believers, Egyptian belie Coptic believers, that celebrate the birth of Jesus in May. Where did they get that from? They just made it up? Okay, let me ask you this question. When we read in the Bible, the sixth month over there in Luke, chapter 1, verse 26, is the Bible talking about the month of June? That's my sixth month. That's your sixth month. Oh, it's not the Jewish sixth month. Oh, okay. And we have to remember that, don't we? That when we're reading the scripture and we read... Um, first month, or, or we're reading the scripture, and, and we read uh, fifth day, we have to remember how the day begins for the Jews, evening. More, these are the things that we have to remember. So I can't, I can't read Luke and think I'm reading about the month of June. Also remember, Exodus 12, what did God tell Moses and Aaron? He said, fellas, let me tell you something that I need you to tell the rest of Israel. Right now begins the year for you. For you, Israel. Not for everybody else. This month is the beginning of months for you. And he wasn't talking about the month of January. All right. Now, I write like a child. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. So. That's what we're going to do. I can't believe that I have to press this button that says Android. This is like, <laughs> that's, that's wrong, brother. That's wrong for you to say that. At least we know it'll work. Okay, so Jewish, the Jewish calendar isn't like our calendar. Well, it is in the sense that it consists of 12 months, but, but it's, it's, Order is different than ours. And of course, it would also make sense that the names of the months of the Jewish calendar 
would be different than, than ours. Now, our calendar that we live by, that pretty much the, the majority of the world lives by, is known as the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar. Gregorian as in Gregory the Great. Okay, but before it was the Gregorian calendar, it, it, we went by the, or the majority of the known world went by the Julian calendar. Of course, Julius Caesar would be to thank for that. Before the Julian calendar, it was the Roman calendar, and we know biblically speaking, the last of the greatest empires in the timeline of the Bible was the Roman Empire. All right, the Roman Empire is in power when Jesus is born. The Roman Empire is in power when John is exiled to the island of Patmos where he receives the revelation of Jesus Christ. So from the book of Matthew to the book of Revelation, who's in charge? Rome. The Roman Empire is. So, so from the Roman to the Julian, Roman, to the Gregorian, Roman, the Gregorian calendar, we have our, our January all the way to February, I mean, uh, uh, to December. And we know that our, our year has how many days? 300 and... 65 days. Uh, yeah, when we have a leap year, it's 366, but, but the majority of the time, I mean, it's an odd number. And we know that every month does not have the same amount of days. Correct. Okay, so for our, for our month of, this is our first, right? The month of January. That's the first for our calendar, but when God told Moses and, and, and uh, Aaron, this is the beginning of months for you, he wasn't talking about this month. Was, he wasn't talking about the first month of a calendar that would later be known as the Gregorian calendar. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do it like this. Instead of starting... Should have been using this a long time ago, huh? Let's go here. All right. If you recall, this is the first month. This is the first month in the Jewish calendar. Well, wait a minute. Let's be a little more specific. This is the first month of the Jewish festival year. This is month number one. In the Jewish festival year, it's, it's, it's number one, but, but in the Jewish uh, uh, civil year, it's actually month, it's, it's month number, it's month number seven. The sun is first in the festival year, but it's number seven in the civil year. What is the Gregorian equivalent to the month of, of Nisan? For us, it's, it's the months in which we celebrate Easter. March and April. Nisan corresponds with... No, no, no. This is... See, remember, the Jews, they, got, they have two calendars. They have two. Festival, civil. Same month, but in the festival year, it's the first. Nisan is number seven in the Jews' civil year. Okay? And what is that equal to? That equals to March, April. Now, you all have probably noticed that Easter likes to move around. For example, it threw me off this year. Resurrection Day is March 31st. Now, you've probably noticed that, that so, so let's compare Christmas to, to Easter. One is an immovable feast. The other one is a movable feast. Easter is your movable feast, right? So we celebrate it. You, 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 you can recall in, in your past, I recall, matter of fact, I can specifically recall celebrating resurrection. If it was ever in the month of March, it was like around the 20-something, like the 23rd or the 22nd. But if it was in April, it was like the 13th, the 14th, something like that. 
And we've seen how Easter, resurrection, Passover, moves March, whereas Christmas is always on the 25th. Now, the, the day of the week might be different, right? But the date remains the same. Whereas you have another type of holiday like Thanksgiving. It doesn't matter what the date is. It's always going to be that, that, that fourth Thursday. So, again, we have Nisan here. First in the festival year, number seventh in the civil year. Oh, and, and then one more thing. One, one more thing. Uh, and this is this is. I always find this as a as an interesting topic. Nisan is, that's not a Hebrew name. That's not Hebrew. That's not Jewish. It's Babylonian. Isn't that interesting? See, this, this, is, this, is where, this is where God gets me, and he really does get me. Like, he stumps me. And I'm okay with being stumped, because he's God. And there are some things we're just not going to know now. So I haven't fully fleshed this out, and I may never flesh it out. Why did he allow the Babylonian names to remain? I mean, in Babylon of all empires, like they're the pagans of the pagans. <laughs> all right, but isn't it, isn't it interesting how, how we, the four Hebrew boys, three of them were tossed into the fiery furnace. One was tossed into the lion's den. You guys know who they are? Name, name them for me. Ah, there you go. Look at you. But isn't that interesting? The three boys, we more commonly know them by their Babylonian names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as opposed to Mishael, Azariah, all right, and, and, uh, and Hananiah. Whereas Daniel had a Babylonian name, Belteshazzar, Bel or Belshazzar. But his Hebrew name, Daniel. It's interesting. We refer to Daniel as Daniel. But we don't refer to the Hebrew boys by their Hebrew names. We more commonly refer to them by their Babylonian names. Interesting. And here we have the month of Nisan. We see this in Scripture. We see this, 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 this month in the fabric of the Word of God. But it's not, well, it's not. It's not the Hebrew name. The Hebrew name is what looks like Abib, but it is Aviv. That's the Hebrew name. So what are we looking at here? Nisan, which is the first in the festival year. We have that same month being the seventh, which means it's starting the second half of the civil year. What's the Gregorian equivalent? March or April. Right? So for us, what is March to April is the month of Nisan. Hebrew name is Aviv. And then we have, we have number two. Probably do like three at a time. This is month number two in the festival year. But in the calendar year, you can obviously guess that it's number what? It's number eight. And by the way, this is the Babylonian name. Well, what's the Gregorian equivalent? Want to take a guess? You said what? You said May? You're, 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 you're partly right. It works like this. There you go. That's our Gregorian equivalent. And Hebrew what's spelled like Z-I-V. Now what's interesting is we only have four of the Hebrew names of the months. We have all 12 Babylonian names. 
but, but, but only four of the, of, of the Hebrew names. Okay? I think moving forward, I, th I think I want to do... I think I want to do two at a time. Okay, Reds, the fast way to clear it up is what? Uh, oh, what, did the, what am I supposed to do again? See, I got to practice on this more. Oh, X, right? There we go. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know, you're going to make it look a lot prettier than what I'm doing because... This just isn't pretty. Okay, number three, make it a little larger so we can see. All right, is the, I have these in my head, but I'm looking in my notes just to make sure. Okay, Babylonian name, it's month number three in the festival year, which means it's month number what in the civil year? All right, month number nine. All right, so it's, it's month number nine, and the you should be able to deduce by now that the Gregorian equivalent would be what? May June. May June. Talk to me. May June. You guys got that. And the Hebrew name is we don't know. But what do we have here? We have. third month of the festival year. That same month is the ninth month of the civil year. Gregorian equivalent is May, June. What's number four? You might recognize this name if you've been listening to all of the pagan lessons that we've taught here, then you should recognize this name. Anybody recognize that? To moves. Assyrian fertility god. Also believed to be the son of Nimrod and Semiramis. Semiramis being the first queen of heaven. Which means she would be a figure that inspired the image of the Virgin Mary according to the Catholic Church. Not Mary of the Bible. Because Mary of the Bible isn't worshipped. She's not worshipped. We, 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 hey, I, res I respect Mary. I got, I got tons of respect for Mary. She is the woman. No question. But I don't worship her. I do not venerate her. I do not pray to her. I go to the Father in the name of the son she carried. I do not pray to Mary. Neither do I pray to any saints. Because if I can pray to some of the saints, I should be able to pray to all of you because you're all saints. Because everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus is a saint. Right? It's not St. Peter, St. Paul, and then Fred over here in the corner. No, I'm just as much saint as Paul and Peter because those who profess the name of Jesus and those who are a part of the ecclesia, the body of Christ, we are all what? We're all saints. We're set apart ones. Mary, again, we all admire her. We don't pray to her. But she's known as the Queen of Heaven because she's the mother of God. As it's been said. Well, that Queen of Heaven title, that, that, that image of this, of this authoritative female figure in the, in, the, in the heavenlies above the cosmos that goes all the way back to the time of Nimrod. The, 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 the consort of Ninus known as Samirimus and it is said that they had a child called Nimrod reborn or Tammuz. Ezekiel the prophet, God used him to, to, to check, to put in their place the children of Israel because they were weeping for Tammuz. It's in the Bible. It's a false God. Tammuz, see, see, there are those, you know, there are those who for years, they have committed their life to discrediting our faith yeah. by a number. You know, the Bible contradicts itself, right? That's one of them. Uh, uh, you, know, you know that the tenets espoused in the Christian faith are tenets espoused in pagan religions that came before the Christian faith. 
Now, some people have never heard this before, so when they hear it, they're a little shook. But if you've been to this class, you've heard it before, and you know why it happened. And in actuality, it doesn't discredit Christianity. It gives it too much credit. Amen. It buttresses up and emphasizes. It actually shows us how true our faith is, how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But there's many stories of sons, divine sons of, 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 of gods and goddesses who appeared by way of virgin means or immaculate means. The story has been told before in parts. Why? How? Easy. You all know that the devil is stupid and smart, right? You know that, right? Like, I, I, I have to... Now, how many of you have dogs? Dogs? Or you, or you know dogs? You guys, guys know any dogs? I know a dog. You know a dog. Okay. Okay. And, for, for, and I'm, I'm, I love dogs. All right? No doubt. Like, I, I speak dog. I communicate with dogs. So they get me, and I get them. But I just have to wonder, sometimes, how can they be so stupid and smart? Yeah. I mean, my dog has, I've, I've enclosed him, maybe to keep him from, you know, to keep him, to keep him occupied while we're eating dinner maybe, or, or I don't want him scratching on the, on the, on the screen. So, so I, I, and he's, he'll figure out a way to get out of this enclosure. And like, there's no, there's no opening. How'd you get out? You smart thing, you, but at the same time, I'm going to toss the same bone every time and you're going to fall for it and you're going to run after it every single time. The devil, he's a genius and he's an idiot. Same time, same time man. Same time. The, the devil Remember, this is, how we know, this is how we know he's both intelligent and, and somehow got a little insight into s certain things of God. For example, you all remember what he said to the woman in Genesis 3? When he was tempting the woman, do you remember what he said? He said, what did the woman say? The woman said, uh, God said we shouldn't eat or touch the fruit. God didn't say that. He said, don't eat. Don't, don't, don't eat or touch the fruit or we'll surely die. And how does the devil respond? He says, mm, no, no, you're, you're not going to die. God knows that when you eat of this fruit, you'll be like him, knowing good and evil. That was, that was the truth. Now, he's a liar and he's a deceiver. So even though he spoke truth, it was for his selfish purposes. But he said something that was right. It was correct. Well, how did he even know? Because we know that what he says is right, because later on in the chapter, what does God say? Man has become like one of us to know good and evil, lest they take from the tree of life and live forever. What the devil said was right. How did the devil know? Was, was, was he, he was in the board meeting? When the Godhead got together to consult with each other, they allowed him in? I don't specifically know how he knew. I've, I've been searching. This is another one of those ones I've been searching out for a while. But he knew. So, his level of intelligence, his celestial intelligence, allows him to, number one, know some things, figure out some things. Right? So, so, what does he now know? He knows that if man sins, man is born into sin. So, so the prophecy then comes... What's the first prophecy? I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman. And your head is going to bruise her heel. Or, or, or uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to put enmity between uh, the seed of the woman and, and your seed. And, and her seed, he's going to what? Crush your head and you're going to bruise his heel. Well, when the devil heard seed, he said what? Oh, this got to do with, it's got to do with a birth. Oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If, 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 if whoever this seed is that's going to crush my head is born the normal way, he'll be born into sin. So he's got to get here somehow sin free. That means there's got to be a what kind of birth. By a bit of deductive reasoning, he was able to figure out 
how the Messiah would come, so he sent out a bunch of counterfeits before the actual Messiah came. Problem is, they couldn't stand the test of time, could they? Because they weren't the seed. They were just a seed. So, to Moses, the first of them, you all know some of their names as well. Anyone ever heard of Cupid? Cupid, the son of Venus. Anyone ever heard of Eros, the child of Aphrodite? All right, these, are, these, are, these are divine children, right? Born without the aid of a, of a man. You can find them in, you can find them in, in Egypt. You can, you can find them in just about every, every civilization. Tammuz is the first of them. And look at this. Tammuz is month number four. This is, I mean, of, of the whole list, I'm calling this the most pagan of the names. And Tammuz is month four. That's, that's, a, that's a god. But wait, God allowed them to retain this name for their calendar, to hold on to the Babylonian name. Okay, so it's, it's uh, month four, which means what? It's, it's, it's month 10 in the civil year. And you guys, obviously, you know what the Gregorian equivalent would be. It would be what? June, July, right? June to July. Okay, what's next? Number five. Okay, let's just go ahead and clear all that out and... Okay, number five would be the month of that's your that's your Babylonian name. Month number five in the festival year, which means in the civil year, it's month number month number eleven, corresponding with what? July August, July, August right? July August again. We do not know the Hebrew name. We don't know the Hebrew name for, for, for uh, uh, Ayar, and, I mean, uh, uh, for Savan and Tammuz. Neither do we know for, for Ab. Uh-oh, what's next then? If this is month number five, then the next month is, in fact, let's just go ahead and it's month number six. Month number what? Wait, y'all go back to, do me a favor, go back to Luke 126. Read that for me. Uh-oh, the what? Sixth month. The what? Sixth month. In the sixth month. In the sixth month. Hmm. Find this kind of interesting. Here we have the sixth month. So in the civil year will be month number 12. August, month of Elul. All right, corresponding with August, August, August September. Read, read, that, read that 26 verse again. Luke now, 1. Now in the sixth month. Now in the sixth month. The angel Gabriel was sent, by God was sent by God to a city of Galilee, to a city of Galilee named, Nazareth. named Nazareth in the sixth. Well, we've already established this is not the month of June. That's you and I. That's our sixth month. That's yours and my sixth month. But not the sixth month of the Bible. Not what the Bible is talking about. No, we have a candidate here, don't we? The month of Elul. But wait a minute now. It corresponds with August, September. Okay, now remember I told you, there, there are a group of, of Egyptian Christians who they celebrate in the month of May. Where 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 they get that from? Okay. 
Okay, let's keep going. We have a we have a Lul as a potential candidate for the sixth month. That's close to six month in the in the uh, festival year. Okay, but it's twelve in the in the civil. Okay, watch this now. What do we have next? Tashiri. Is that R E I? Tishri. Okay, so wait a minute now. If it's number seven in the festival year, if the previous month of Elul was six in the festival year, but 12 in the civil, then Tishri, which is seventh in the festival, must be what? One. Must be one. Must be the first month of the, of the civil year, corresponding with September, October. September, October. Also known by its Hebrew name, Ethanim, E-T-H-A-N-I-M, Ethanim. Remember, of the 12 months, we only have four Hebrew names. What number are we on now? Eight? Eight. Eight, Eight is Shesvan. Okay, which means it's the number what in the civil? Two. Right, it's two in the civil, corresponding with what's the Gregorian equivalent? October, November. October, November. October, November. Number nine then would be. Uh, Kislev, and I'm definitely not pronouncing these the exact way they're pronounced. So in the civil year, it's number three. Gregorian equivalent would be what? November, December. November, December. All right, we're going through the Jewish calendar. Again, Luke 1 says, in the sixth month. Who's been writing this down? Outstanding. So you guys will be able to do, do some recall for me. Okay. Number 10. Month of. Well, if it's 10 in the festival year, it's what number in the civil year? Four. Four, and it would correspond with? Uh, December, January. December, January. And then number 11, we're getting, getting to the end here. The month of Shabbat. which makes it number what? Number five yes. in the civil year, clearly corresponding with? January, February. Gregorian equivalent of Jan, Feb. It's two months because, you know, it's not an exact science. So it's around this time, somewhere within these 60-ish these days. Okay, now you all see, this is, how, this, this is how old some of my notes are. You guys remember when in the Q&A, someone told me about the Jewish leap year? Yeah. 
And I was like, I didn't know there was a Jewish leap year. Apparently, I did know there was a Jewish leap year because I wrote it in my notes. <laughs> These notes are old. Okay. Adar. You got it. Adar. How'd you know that? All right, you research too. This is a class of researchers. Amen. Well, if it's 12 in the festival year, it must be in the civil year. Six. Six. Corresponding with what? February, March. February. February, March. Well, we just found our second six month, didn't we? We found our first one, our festival six month, is a little. Our civil six month is, is a dar. Now, May uh, uh, May in give me the, the months for that, e that equal May real quick, you all. Yeah, give me so give me April, May as well as May, June. So do April, May first. I all right. So we'll go right for right now, we'll go with the Babylonian name. So it's, it's, it's Avar or Ayar and Savan. These are the, these are the months that, that correspond with the, with the uh, month of May. Or also the civil year can be, can be known as the ecclesiastical year. Can also be known as the ecclesiastical year. Now. Now I'm drawing a blank. All right, Holy Spirit, bring it back to my remembrance. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think I somehow I've, I've thrown myself off here because these. Um, ah, there we go. Here we go. Um, our tenth, our twelfth month. Oh, well, you know, I'm gonna have to come back to you next time and fix this. These believers, they celebrated May. Right, but May is not equaling any six month. It would be, it would be nine months after, uh, after the rule, right? There, yeah, there we go. The rule is when Gabriel came. Right. That's what it is. Right. So, so. Right, so Gabriel comes, right, he comes in, this, in the month of Elul, and then, yeah, nine months later is what? May, June. May, June. There we go. There we go. See? Okay. So if we went, see, this is why I need y'all help. I'm telling you, sometimes I, there's too much information in here. Okay, if we were to go with um, the ecclesiastical or civil year, the sixth month is what? Adar, correct? And so then nine months later, an Adar corresponds with March, February, or February, March. 
right? So nine months later would, would give us what? Right, which is what? November, December. A month in which we celebrate Christmas. But if we go with the festival six year, I mean festival six month, which is the month of what? Elul. Then nine months later gives us what? Roughly May. So you have this group of believers, early Christians, and, and they still do it today, Egyptian Christians. It's a small group, but they celebrate the birth of Jesus in the month of May, which means clearly they deduce that conception took place in what month? The month of Elul, and Elul will transport us to the month of which, he, which the, the month of Elul brings us to where? Uh, right, August, September. Nine months after Elul is May, June? Right, nine months after Elul is May, June. Exactly. So, again, you have, these early, you have these early Christians celebrating his birth in May, so it's obvious this is how they view the meaning of the sixth month. Are they right? Exactly. Can't say for sure, but they didn't just pull May out of nowhere. The only thing that I could come up with is that they see this as beginning in a lull and leading to the month that is the Gregorian equivalent to, right, May, June? May, June. Right. That's choice number one. Then we have got number two. So that's, 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 so that's one proposed month for the birth of the Messiah, May. Again, you got these early Christians in, in Egypt celebrating his birth in the month of May. That comes from their understanding of the sixth month. But again, is that what the Bible was saying? All right, now, I mean, I think, I think the best we can say is maybe. Could be. We can't say for sure. All right, we have a good portion of the world celebrating the month of December. And right, now where do we get that from? We just make that up. Well, we did. We if we look at the what the ecclesiastical year, then Adar gives us what it leads us to what December roughly. But that's only part of the reason for December. Now let's rule out. Let's rule out all of the supposed pagan reasons. The Romans had a whole lot of festivals, a whole lot. One festival was called Saturnalia, Saturnalia, which took place supposedly somewhere between December 19th and December 22nd. And you know what one of the things or one of the, the, the features of this, of this feast was, of this festival was? Gift exchange. See, told you, Christmas is pagan. The Romans were already celebrating Saturnalia. And what's Saturnalia? Saturnalia is a festival to who? Saturn. Now, Saturn, we know the planet with the rings around it. Second largest in our solar system. But the Romans worshipped a deity named Saturn, which, by the way, is the eponymous founder of, or the day Saturday is named after Saturn, Saturn Day. Saturday is named after Saturn. Saturn was a Roman titan. Who were the titans? The titans were the fathers and the aunties and the uncles of the Olympian gods. So the gods we know as Zeus and Poseidon and Hades 
and Rhea and Aphrodite and, and Hephaestus, in some cases Dionysus, these gods had a fight with mommy and daddy and auntie and uncle, the titan deities. Well, well, the, in, Roman, in, the, in, in Roman mythology, the chief god is Jupiter. The Greeks call him what? They call him Zeus. Okay, so who was Jupiter's father? Jupiter's father was Saturn. Right, the Greeks call him uh, uh, brain, brain, brain freeze. Uh, anyway, um, uh, Cronus. Greeks call him Cronus. There's a war in, in Greek and Roman mythological past. There's a war in heaven. Sound familiar? Yes. War in heaven? Warring factions in heaven? Yes. Okay, the Olympian gods, Zeus and company, according to the Greeks, Jupiter and company, according to the Romans, fight mommy and daddy and auntie and uncle, and they win. They prevail against them. And what does Zeus for the Greeks, Jupiter for the Romans, what do, what do they they proclaim as the punishment for the titans that they've defeated? Lock them up in a place called Tartarus. Hell. Hell. In which the Bible calls the realm of the imprisoned angels. The realm of the watchers. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. 2 Peter 2, 4. What does the Bible say? God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to where? Hell, but the Greek word is not Hades or Gehenna. It's the only place in Scripture. Whenever we see something mentioned only one time, I know what I do. I pay very close attention. One mention? One time? It's the only place in Scripture where the word hell is the Greek word tartaru, which gives us tartarus. Now, the Greeks believed in Tartarus as an abyss deeper than Hades. And Zeus, Jupiter, had their parents and aunts and uncles, because those were the gods before them, had them imprisoned in Tartarus. Where did they get that from? What inspired that? The biblical account of the Watcher. And what did the Watchers do? The Watchers came down. And they made it with human women and gave birth to what? Gave birth to giants, the Nephilim. In other words, they gave birth to something that was what? That was half divine and half human. Sounds like the demigods of Greek and Roman mythology. Most prominent of them all, Hercules. Heracles in the Greek, Hercules is his Roman name. That's the name we know him by. We, he, his daddy was, was Zeus, but his mama, Alcmene, or Alcmene, a human woman. Hercules is known as a demigod. Anyone ever heard of Perseus or Perseus? What is he known for? He's known for, for cutting the head off the Gorgon Medusa. We know that, that story. And, and, and uh, Theseus, who was known for uh, uh, entering the labyrinth and killing the Minotaur. These are Famous Greek story. All of these are Zeus's babies. They're what? They're half divine, half human. Where'd they get that from? Where's that come from? Genesis 6, 1 through 4. The watchers descended into the earth realm, took human women as wives, and sired aberrations. Hybrids that should have never, should have never been. Should have never been. Okay. So as I'm running out of time. So we see how the, the, either, either the Bible or the ancient Jewish writings have influenced quite a bit of the Greco-Roman writings and the Greco-Roman stories, the Greco-Roman myths. And so here you have this figure, Saturn, again, the father of Jupiter. Saturn has a feast, a, a festival in his honor, in his name, Saturnalia. It took place in the month we would know as December. The latter part of December, there was a feast. There was an exchanging of gifts. Sounds like Christmas, right? Okay. But does that automatically mean that it's Saturnalia that influenced Christmas? 
Not necessarily. You could say maybe. But what we would have to do then is also look throughout history at other holy festivals relegated to particular cultures and see, did they have any feasts where there were gifts exchanges? If so, did they all happen in the month we know as December or did they happen at other times throughout the year? So you can't say emphatically that the reason why we celebrate Christmas is because of Saturnalia. No, not, not necessarily. So there could be a connection there, but we can't say officially it is the connection. But we have to stop now. Hope you stay tuned in. Father, we thank you for your word. It's, it's life. It's, it's truth. It will not, cannot, shall not return to you void, empty, vain, futile, useless. Empty, it will accomplish, Father. Your word be, you intend for your word to accomplish. Your word accomplishes where it lands, where it arrives, it prospers. Thank you for your accomplishing and prospering word this evening. Thank you for these who have, have, have come out tonight and those who have tuned in, who desire a greater understanding of, of things spiritual and, and biblical. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity for me to function in my calling as a teacher. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making the invitations I'll mention in just a moment. Available to the people, if you don't know Jesus. Some might say, you know, Pastor, what, isn't the most important, the most important thing, bottom line, that, that Jesus was born? Actually, yeah, it is. Yeah, he was born, he lived, he walked amongst men, showed us how to live, died on the cross. Death couldn't hold him. He defeated death, took the keys, was resurrected. Ascended to the right hand of the Father, S sat down, and, and, and he's waiting until his enemies are made his footstool. That's more important than anything. We, we, we gather together on these Wednesday nights to discuss these, these, these subjects because God gave us minds. He knows we're curious, and so we investigate things to the best of our ability according to the Scriptures. But when it's all said and done, here's what we can't refute. The tomb is empty. He was raised, resurrected, and eternal life is available to any who would believe on him. And if you don't believe on him, you can believe on him now. Maybe you've been, you've been questioning, you've been speculating, you've been ifing, you've been welling, maybeing. Let tonight be your night. Today salvation has come to our house. Whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. A gift that is received by faith. Another gift was given, a gift to the church, the gift of the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit. A number of, of signs and indicators that one is filled. The primary sign, speaking with other tongues. But there are, other, there are other indicators that one is filled with the Spirit. The requirement, the only requirement is that you're born again. To, to be filled with the Spirit enables us to be witnesses for God's kingdom in the earth realm. He told his disciples, wait here, wait and you shall receive power when or after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you'll be a witness. We should all be witnesses for the king, receiving dunamis power, ability. If you haven't been filled, you can be filled tonight. Another gift received by faith. And number three is to become a part of this ministry, this local ministry. There should be a place where we, where we come together, we gather together, we break bread, we fellowship, we, we iron sharpens iron. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's in person. Ideally, it's in person. Maybe you're, you're waiting to discover a place to go to in person. And in the interim, you tune in and you join us online. And you can become a part of our online family as well. We, we see this as a ministry where the word is taught, where you'll grow in the things of God. And lastly, number four, assurance of salvation. God wants you to know that you're saved. You should know it. You shouldn't hope it or think it or wonder about it. You should know. And you can know this evening as well as you know your name and age. Those four again to be saved, to be filled with the Spirit, to make this ministry your home ministry for assurance of salvation. If any one of these 
or a combination of these apply to you wherever you are, in person tonight or wherever you are seated right now or standing right now, wherever you're streaming right now, you can make these decisions by a show of hands in person, even by a show of hands wherever you are, even though I can't see you. But my gut feeling is that at least one person is raising their hand. And if so, we're going to pray a prayer together. Two prayers, one to be saved, one to be filled with the Spirit. I'm going to ask that everyone repeat after me so that we are of one accord for salvation. First, simply saying, dear God, dear God I, repent of my sins, I repent of my sins and I confess with my mouth, with my mouth the, Lord the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that you've raised him from the dead. I am now saved according to your word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. To be filled with the Spirit, simply repeat after me, saying, Heavenly Father, by faith, I received the gift of the Spirit. I am now filled with the Spirit. I have received my heavenly language. But most importantly, I am now a witness for the King and Kingdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you have prayed any one of these or combination of these prayers tonight for the very first time. In person, raise your hand up high at home if that's you. If, you. if you have prayed these prayers, know that you're a part of the family of God. You are filled with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And, and you may wonder, what's next? Where do I go from here? What, what do I do? This email address is how you can reach out to us. You can reach out to us and, and we will respond accordingly. One more time, is there anyone in-house? We want to make sure we don't miss anybody. And it appears we are all saved, and we know it, and we are filled with the Spirit, and we have a place that we can call, we can call home. Praise God. Well, it is time to give now. Hallelujah. It's time to sow, and we give in so cheerfully wherever we are and whenever that is. God loves a cheerful, happy, and hilarious giver. And so let us be of those who continue in giving, continue in one of the greatest of good deeds. Let me also r remind you, every once in a while I like to say this, you know, giving to your local ministry is important. Uh, finances are, they, they're needed. I, I hear people, even in 2024, try to argue this. The finances are, they're, they're, there is a place in which, and there are questions that only they can answer, finances can answer, in, in the furtherance of, of the gospel. But your giving should not be limited to, to your local ministry. You, you, should, you should be giving to your brother in the Lord. You should, you should give to the poor. Yes. There are a number of, of, of categories in which we, we could give and we should practice this as, as a way of life. Because whatever one sows, so shall that one reap. Amen. And we will reap in due season if we faint not. And we do not give up, do not lose heart. If you're ready to give, let's lift our gifts up. Or let's lift our hands up. You know, I, I, uh, I, I, I remember a number of ministers, they would say, every time I, I come into the, you know, they say the house of the Lord. You and I know we are the house of the Lord. But every time I come into the house of the Lord, I have something to give. And I remember my dad would say, yeah, that's not me. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't either. You know, some people, they, I mean, for example, if you're a part of this ministry and you gave Sunday, you, you gave. It's not of necessity that you give Wednesday morning and Wednesday night. You know, some people break it up so that they can give during all three times. It's, it's as you purpose in your heart. Let us never forget that. And if anyone is coerced, if you all catch me coercing you into practicing compulsory giving, somebody slap me in the face. Don't slap me in the face. Don't do that. But. <laughs> because Sai is probably going to slap you in the face. But get out of here. Leave. That's not the kind of giving we practice. Amen. 
We give as we purpose and as we are led. Yes. Free will giving. Yes. Freely one gives, freely one receives. Let's lift our gifts up to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus. He will take them and worship the Father on our behalf. I'll pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you always for the opportunity to sow towards what you're doing in the earth realm via this particular ministry, but we thank you for the opportunity to give via ministries that are doing your work. We, we consider it an honor to be partners with them, but even more of an honor to be a partner and laborer with you. And we know that we are spreading the message of our living Savior, seeing to it that that message goes forth into this dying world. And I thank you that as we give this day according to what we have, as we purpose in our heart, doing so cheerfully, that we will reap the corresponding manifold return in our giving. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your healing power. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And so we thank you for those who have received already. There has been a noticeable difference. Pain has departed. Heaviness has lifted. They were able to hear the word without distraction from those things. And so we rejoice with them. But Father, we continue to stand in faith and agreement with any who may, have, may not have seen the manifestation yet. But if having believed they receive when we prayed, then they will. And we know this because you said if we pray according to your word, you hear us. And if we know you hear us, we know we have what we've asked of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you, Father, for your healing power, filling this place and filling wherever those who are watching, filling those places as well. Hallelujah. Well, before we get into Q&A, and those of you who will depart during that time, your help is needed. The Union Rescue Mission is in urgent need of hygiene donations. Therefore, starting Sunday, February 25th through March 10th, you will have an opportunity to sow seed and join Lady Angel and me as we support URM with the following hygiene donations, hand soap, body lotion, shampoo and conditioner, deodorant, toothpaste and toothbrushes, travel size, body wash, bath towels, underwear for men, women and children and men's undershirts. Donations may be dropped off in the main foyer on Sunday. Again, new products, please. New products only. And the question was asked this morning, can you give? Of course, you can just simply give or sow uh, towards this specific union rescue mission, mission, if that's what you so desire to do. Intercessory prayer will be here in this room, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. Elder Bowden will lead that. Until then, again, those of you who are departing now, logging off now, continue to have the best week of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those who are remaining, question and answer time begins right about now. You can, cut, you can go right there. Just, yeah, cut right there. Right, next to the, there you go. Now let me go ahead, I, I need to actually make that. Every once in a while somebody does cross. Uh, whenever you're, you all are departing or even entering in, just make sure you don't come right in front of the camera, the main camera in the middle. Hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and what's funny is when I first studied it, I, like I had the whole May thing down, and then I'm up here confusing myself, like, wait a minute, why am I lost? Then I'm forgetting to count nine months. So it's just, <laughs> yeah. Great message. Uh, uh, could you please explain the reason for the uh, Jewish festival and civil or ecclesiastical calendar labels since both have 12 months and 12 distinct names? It seems a little redundant or confusing for society uh, expressing one year in this manner. The reason is, is, is you see this pattern in scripture. And again, I, it's like, okay, Saul is Paul and Paul is Saul. Do you all know that, that we... we 
So there's one way you can look at it. You can look at it as Saul is the old man and Paul is the new man. Saul is the flesh and Paul is the spirit. Or you can just keep it on the surface. Saul was his Jewish name. Paul's his Gentile name. And we see this a lot in scripture. So uh, I, I don't know any other reason for it except um, Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a distinction, uh, just like with the name of, of, of a particular someone, a certain group may only use one of those names, whereas uh, another group would use the other name. You may have some who would call them either. And so, uh, of course, they were in a Babylonian captivity, and there, there just was a lot of Babylonian influence. Anyone ever... Okay, we've heard of the Torah, right? Yeah. Have you heard of the Talmud? Yeah. It's Babylonian. So there's just a lot of, just a lot of Babylonian influence. Uh, really, again, the question goes back to why did God allow it to be retained? I don't know. I don't, maybe there's a, some ministry that could be utilized in it. But other than that, I, I don't know any other reason except God is God. But if you got a theory, come on, brother. Yeah, share it. So, now, you know, they, they, they're going to want you on the mic. I know. And it's a, it's, look, you can, look, cut, or, cut behind Reggie and then cut. There you go. That's, that's your, that's your fast way. This is not a mic. This is a quick theory. But we like theories. I like theories. So, is uh, mic on? Mic on? Now? Okay. So, Babylonian could also be Chaldean. True. Yep. So is the could it be that those names were even older? I mean, they go back even beyond yeah. the Babylonian Empire, way, 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 way back. That's you know, true. and maybe uh, while Abraham would have spoken Hebrew for sure, but maybe he spoke other languages. I mean, he probably spoke Egyptian. Yeah. Uh, he maybe spoke Chaldean. Yep. And maybe those names go back even farther than Babylon. They probably go back to Babel, actually. Yes. Yeah. So maybe they go back that far. So the, anyway. Yeah. And, the, so maybe and that, that's would, why that would have been their, the names that they were universally known by way back then. Got another part to the theory? No. Another, another. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, no, no we, need, we need you on the mic. Come on. <laughs> And here's the thing, the people at home, like, they want to hear from you, from you all, because they're like, what are they saying? <laughs> um, backing up what, well, on what this brother was saying. A little closer, um, a little closer. Here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, the names, because they were old, could have meaning that we don't even know or understand because of the antiquity of the language that they possibly was derived from. Absolutely. So when we have these kind of mysteries like that, because we only have a limited source, there's so much before that hasn't even been brought up for us to um, have recognition of or even discuss. Yeah. There's so many an ancient languages and mm -hmm. meanings and, and what they go with. And, you know, God always has some kind of meaning behind it, but that's what comes to mind for yeah. me. Yeah. I, I like, I want to piggyback on meaning. Um, a lot of these words were actually universal words for the people in that day. So, for example, if right now I were to say Baal, your first thought probably is pagan God. We, 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 we read about ba Baal. Uh, we read about the Baals, the Baals in Scripture, right? Baals above, for example. Well, the word, apart from the Canaanites or any other heathen culture, the word Baal or Baal is a Semitic word that simply means Lord. How about this one? Let's bring it to a more modern context. First thing you think of when I say Allah, what's the first thing you think of? You think of Islam. Why? 
that's what they call it. That's what they that's, Not only is it, is it because that's what they say, it's because we pretty much have only heard Allah in the context of Islam. Yes. But Allah is just simply Arabic for God. Yes. But the Muslims personalized. It's the same with Elohim. Elohim means God or means God. Actually, it's God's because it's plural. But we know our God is Elohim. So, so there's a much older meaning. But we've, we've, all, we've also established that sometimes the older meaning fades. It just, it just fades away. And there, you can't bring it back. You, 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 people look at you like you're crazy. Right? Again, I use gay in the swastika. If I walk around with a shirt saying I'm, I'm very gay today. <laughs> the reality is, is no one is thinking happy. They're not, th they're not thinking that. Not in the era we live in now. Matter of fact, I, I can't even, I, I couldn't even, if I wear a shirt with a rainbow on it. Okay. Odds are no one's first thinking it's Noah's covenant. Yeah. God's covenant with the earth. Mm -hmm. They're probably then not going to think the leprechaun in the pot of gold. And they're probably then not going to think Skittles taste the rainbow. They're not going to think it. They're going to think of what the rainbow means now. The swastika, we know. We see that swastika, and some of us, we're we ready to fight. We're ready to fight somebody who ain't even around us. We see that swastika. <laughs> Hitler didn't create that symbol. Go ahead, brother. Well, actually, no, let me, let, me, let, me, let me read. He didn't create that symbol, though. It had a meaning the nat to the natives of this country, to, to the... The natives of the Far East, that symbol was a symbol of, of peace, a symbol of, of tranquility. It's evil now. And again, there's, there's no going back because no one's going to believe me if I wear that. First, they're going to think something's wrong with me because, dude, you're black and you got a swastika on. What's wrong with you? There's no way I can even defend my position. That No, no, I don't, I don't mean it like that. I don't mean it like that. I don't mean gay like that. I don't mean whatever like it. We can't be in church and calling God Baal. Not today. Uh -uh. And somebody hears you, what's wrong with you? Oh, no, I only mean Lord. Because that's what it originally meant. That's right. But now personification has been given to it. Right? I can't be in church and just decide that I want to use the Arabic word for God today. Allah. Talking about Allah, and all of a sudden, somebody's looking at me like, you, you Muslim? You converted? <laughs> that's the power of words and the power of changing the meaning of a word. Patrick, why did God allow Satan in the Garden of Eden? Why did he allow him in? Okay, yeah, if we think that the events of Isaiah happened before man is created, he was already in the earth realm. And then remember what Ezekiel said, you were in Eden, the Garden of God. So, and then also remember what he said. He said, I'm going to exalt my throne. So, so the adversary said, I've got, I've, got a, I've got a space of authority here. So, and then also think about this. Obviously, he had some kind of permission because what did God tell Adam to do? The Bible says he placed man in the garden to do what? To tend and to keep it. And what does keep mean? That means protect. So it's like, well, protect from what? Right? And you might be like a parent. That's none of your business. Just protect this place. Okay. Not saying God said that, but no, in advance, Adam, you've got to hedge about. Hedge about this place. Protect. So clearly the adversary had some, there was clearly some permission included in the initial expulsion. Yes, sir. Theories. You got a theory? Another theory? I love theories. Well, no, this is, it has to do with uh, just uh, Luke, the book of Luke being written by Luke to Theophilus. Mm -hmm. So whatever Theophilus bent would have been, whether a civil year or a festival year, that's probably what the six month would have been referring to, whether a Dara or a Lou. So the more we know about Theophilus probably determines what Luke was trying to convey. Yes, and... I'm glad you said that because we're going to go there with this, with making our case for December. So now I'll give you a little hint. Theophilus is definitely, 
Okay. What kind of name is Theophilus? Just, with, just close your eyes and listen. What, is it, what does it sound like? Sounds Greek to me. And Luke was written to which, which audience? The Greek audience. So what if the sixth month has something to do with the Greek year? Hold on to that one for next time we're together. Pastor, if a person sows at a ministry of prosperity teaching, will, will they still reap? Or a church that's, that waters down the gospel with a person who sows at those churches, will they still reap? Yeah, you know, it, again, it has, the ground is important. So I can't speak, like I can't say that just because a ministry teaches prosperity, that that just means, well, because first off, there's, there's teaching about prosperity, and then there's the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel is a prosperity-centered gospel. That's problematic. Yeah. That's problematic. Teaching biblical prosperity principles is biblical. Teaching a gospel that removes Christ from the center and places prosperity or poverty at the center that's problematic. Will they reap? Uh, depends on the, on the heart condition of that ministry, I would say. Uh, and then, I, you know, I've got my, my own opinion about ministries that water down the gospel. I mean, it's a, it's a disservice to the kingdom, but, you know, I can't say that those aren't genuine converts, souls that, that get saved. You have a Question or theory? Kind of both. Kind of both. All right, come on. This is the brainiac of the room, guys. So. <laughs> One of. Um, so my question is about the context that I see in verse 24. Okay. We're t right before verse 26, where it talks about in the six month Gabriel visits, it talks about Elizabeth being in her fifth month, and it's not clear what month her pregnancy began. So it's a little Oops. more ambiguous, but that's, that's where I'm coming from. I'm looking at verse 24 like, okay, we have her four months. I back up. I see the days of Herod. I see the division yes. of Abijah, but yes. I don't see a specific yes. date of see, her beginning. that's what students of the word are supposed to do. <laughs> so please know. Just like he mentioned Theophilus, everything she just said, those are more factors that we're going to plug in as we make our December case. Well, actually, our December and our September case, right? When John the Baptist was due, when Elizabeth got pro all of that factors in. See, y'all a smart class. Okay, here we go. Pastor, we understand how December could be a possible birth month for Jesus. Is there an indication of where the 25th came from? Hmm. See, look at you. All right. Yeah, we're going to talk about the 25th. We're going to talk about winter solstice. We're going to talk about Yule. Anyone ever heard of Yule? Yule tie? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mr. Constantine, he's, he's the daddy of it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, we'll get into the 25th. So, again, remain in your seats with your seatbelts fastened. Pastor, where can we find that the Israelites possess the land of Canaan first? So it wasn't that the Israelites... I believe you're asking this, the question in which I've mentioned how that land was actually land that belonged to, to Shem first. It was Semitic land. And I believe that was the Book of Jubilees. Yeah. So it's in the Book of Jubilees where we see... And again, if you look at the map, it looks like... Like, I'm, I know, I'm asking myself the question, Canaan, why is that your land? Why are you way up here? All your brother's lands are right here. Why are you way over here? You look like, it looks like it doesn't fit. It looks like it doesn't, doesn't match up. It didn't. That was Semitic land. Canaan stole it. He stole the land, and then it was, it was, it was basically a prophecy. A prophecy was given to him. 
the way in which you took this land, it's how you're going to lose it. And it, it was fulfilled. And again, God, even if we don't always understand the ways of God or the why of God, there is a why. And God is so smooth. He does everything legally. He's never illegal. We are. The devil is all the time. God, everything he does is by way of legality. Masterful. Yep, keeper of his word. Okay, here we go. This is a great question. With the great information that you just gave in this lesson, how should believers of the body of Christ truly celebrate the birth of Jesus in your opinion? All right, you ready for this one? This is deep. Here it comes. It's coming from way down here. The law of liberty. You, how you see fit. Remember, I said before, there is nothing in there's no, there's no, and then when you even talk about commandments, like you, the, the New Testament commandment is to love. Yes. Right, so you don't see this, 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 you celebrate the birth of the Savior. Again, I haven't found any scripture that says we better do it. But then I also say, why wouldn't I do it? I, I, I can't celebrate resurrection, which, of course, is, is your choice. If, I, if there's no birth, there's no resurrection. If I'm going to celebrate my birthday, I'm going to celebrate the birthday of, 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 of the Savior, right? Even if I came across information that questioned when he was born, it doesn't question that he was born. So how should believers, in my opinion, as you see fit? As you see fit. There is no right. Well, clearly, there can be a wrong way, of course. But there's no set right. Like, if you can only do it like this. It's the only way you can celebrate the birth of Jesus. Mm -mm. Not at all. What is the sister's name at the mic? You talking about Miss Eunice? <laughs> Pastor, can you turn tonight's lesson into a book more people need to know? I sure can. All right. I'm glad you're all in my head. Yep. See, this is why I love this class. This question right here. This is the online audience. They are sh just as sharp as you all. Pastor, have you heard Allah was a moon god that originated in Palestine? Yep. Do you all remember what we discovered with the Midianites in the book of Judges? Remember, they had chains with the crescent moon. Years before Islam ever showed up, what is on the Islamic flag? The crescent moon. Show, so it shows you, and Midianites, were, they were Arabians. They were Arab people. And descendants of Abraham. And Isla, it, watch this. God did not promise that Islam would come through Abraham, but Islam came through Abraham because his descendants, it was birthed out of his descendants. Ishmael and, 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 and the Ishmaelites, the Midianites. The, so have I heard? Absolutely. Because there's also Arabian mythology. They were polytheistic. And Allah was a lunar deity. That's why you had that crescent moon on their flag. Why? Because you had Midianites wearing crescent moons before there was ever an Islam. And it's in the Bible. Not that it's not a prophecy, it's an observation. Also, this Muslim said Jesus called out Allah on the cross because he spoke Aramaic. Aramaic was the language of Iran. Right? The early Syria had nothing to do with... <laughs> My God does not translate into Allah. But I mean, if you're an Arab believer and you're speaking your native language, sure, you could fit it there, but not the personal Allah of Islam.
No. You're going to ask some good ones tonight. Uh, don't be trying to get to that mic. You think you slick. They got, plus, they, got, they, all want, they, all, they all want to know you now, Eunice. They, they want to hear from you. Okay, while she's coming, what, what if they aren't watering down the gospel? Maybe they are just staying in their lane of what they are called to do. Maybe like Joel Osteen. To me, he's a master exhorter in the body of Christ. And that's a way you can look at it. That's a way you can look at it. I, I'm going to stay over here. Now, I would say this. If, I, if I'm a shepherd, I have to feed you. And I've got to give you nutrition. I can't just keep giving you milk. I can't. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job as a shepherd. Pastor, if both trees were in heaven, would that be the reason why the devil could be? I think I've talked about that. Like, what if these were trees? Because right now, where's the tree of life? We don't know. But doesn't it show up in New Jerusalem? And New Jerusalem comes from where? So does New Jerusalem come down where old Jerusalem was? And because New Jerusalem is existing in a world where there's no sin, we can now see the tree of life. And it's always been here, but we couldn't see it because of sin. Or did the tree of life, even though the Bible doesn't say anything else about it after Genesis 3, that, that specifically its location, was it, did it ascend or was it removed from the earth? Possibly. So I've talked about this, how, how, and then rem also remember, everything we see in the earth realm already existed in the spirit realm. So, could be, that could be how he knew about it. Yes. Um. I'm going to finish with her, because I'm three minutes over, and these last two, Angel. <laughs> Don't you send me another six sets of questions. Yeah, I know. I do. I do. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop after these. These are the last ones I see. That's it. I'm going to be done. Go for it. Okay. Twofold. One is possibly that we don't know the birth of Christ or the actual month because that wasn't as important as his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And for us to be focused on that versus the thing that saved us may be why it wasn't lined out. Like anything that we're supposed to have attention toward, it's in the word. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right. And it's, an, it's not a hidden fact. This is something that, yes, his birth was important, but it wasn't the thing that saved us. Mm. So, you know, Satan took a lot of things and, and whooped it up for us to focus on versus the things that we need to be focused on. The other point I wanted to make was about the tree of life and the tree of good and evil is that it doesn't appear to me that these are new things. Mm -hmm. Do you know they were new to earth, but not necessary to the celestial beings? True. And because Satan was operating at one time at one of the highest levels as a celestial being. Anointed and everything. He would, this doesn't seem unlikely that right. he would have known about this and mm -hmm. about this source. Right. I, you know, my question was always, well, why'd you put it here if we weren't supposed to eat it? But mm -hmm. I think that also has to do right. with obedience mm -hmm. and our growth and development in our relationship with God. And then once we hit a certain level or peak, you know, then that might have been something that would have been revealed to us at that time. But Adam and Eve were like, you know, infants. They were they were newborns mm -hmm. right. to Christ. So I, I mean, to God. So He had to raise them up, develop the relationship, and then expose them to those things. Because I don't think they would have had any other reason to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's not His way to just tempt us, put something in the middle of the garden, and say, "Now, don't touch it." Right. But not for that moment. Mm -hmm. And those are my two points. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> um. Oh, my wife's, oh, you want to send the rolling eyes emoji? That's what you want to do? Okay. Oh, yeah, you better send a laughing face emoji right after. Uh, we do know that, obviously, so one of the faces of a cherub is the face of a man. 
The devil was a cherub. Lucifer was a cherub. So again, before these creatures are made in the earth realm, heaven already has a celestial that has the face of a lion, an eagle, an ox, and a man. So again, and remember, mountains, mountains didn't first show up in the earth. Mountains exist in heaven. Rivers and streams and streets didn't just show up in the earth. They already exist in heaven. So, uh, greetings, Pastor. The study I sent you would have helped greatly with tonight. It has all the months and names used during the different periods with scripture references. And so I'm still looking for this. Did I ask you to send it again? This is for you, the one. Uh, I don't remember if I did. So I got folks tra trying to track it down, but maybe just send me a fresh one because I want to see it. And I'm probably going to use it in the lesson. So Th this individual, they said before that they, they, they did a, they did a breakdown of the, of the uh, timeline, I believe. I believe from the birth to the resurrection or maybe just around the resurrection, but they're identifying, they're being real specific with the months. So it's just a resource that they created on their own that would help. And I want to see it. Uh, someone's asking Miss Angel to tell me to write a study Bible. I do want to do that. That's going to take a lot of time and I'm going to need a lot of help, but I am interested in doing that. Seems like Peter was keeping uh, Yom Kippur around the same time as Cornelius in Acts 10.10. 10, that's the uh, uh, Day of Atonement. Uh, he found help, too, from the Lord. Um, again, if we see any uh, apostle um, participating in a feast, they are in the book of Acts, which is post-cross, post-Calvary. They are not doing it under obligation. They're doing it by choice. They also consider the fact that they could be doing it because they're just in the habit of it, and then, but, but have come to the realization because Christ fulfilled it all that they're not required to do it. We are not required to keep any holy day for our righteousness or our justification. If that's the case, we're saying his death wasn't enough. It wasn't enough, and we, we, need, we need more things to do to get that righteousness. No, our righteousness is in Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Pastor, have you read or, or heard about a book called Legend of the Jews? I have not. Curious as to what it's about. Let's stand, everyone. Father, we thank you again, always for the opportunity that we have to come together, to hear the word, to grow in it. Thank you for your grace your divine protection wherever we are and wherever we go. We thank you that uh, uh, the angels have been given charge over us and that they are ready to minister for us as they witness us live out the word and they hear us speak the word in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. See you guys next time.